Hey, fangirls and fanboys, I'm Kyle Theobald. I'm here today with a new episode of the Obscure Spotlight. Today's episode, we're going to talk about Ultra the Multi Alien. Ultra uh, is a, a human named Ace Arn. He's uh, created by Dave Wood and Lee Elias. Uh, and he first appeared in Mystery in Space, number 103, which came out in 1965. Uh, Ace was uh, living in this 22nd century kind of future uh, uh, in a universe. It was our universe, I suppose, but uh, where there was other life on every planet and interplanetary travel was commonplace. He was a pilot and he was taking some uh, uh, equipment and some passengers and all of a sudden his ship got caught in a in the magnetic field of a comet and uh, he you know was the hero and got everyone off the ship in time except himself and he was caught in the magnetic field and sucked into another solar system uh, so basically pretty much as soon as he gets out of this uh, magnetic field he stumbles onto this uh, asteroid or whatever and he just falls into this alien plot there's uh in this solar system there's four different species of aliens they're called the Ola the LaRue the Trago and the Regan, and as soon as he gets there, pretty much he he gets shot by uh, each of these aliens. And the, the interesting thing is, all four aliens have a gun that, when they shoot something from out of their universe, it will transform whatever they shoot into a member of their own species. So the fact that he gets shot by all four of them with one of these ray guns all at one time, it transforms a quarter of his body into each one of these alien species. So he just kind of split down the middle and then like at his waist, each part of his body is, is a different species. And it, it actually is kind of handy for him because he gets the, the powers that each race has. Uh, he gets super strength, magnetic powers, flight, and a, a lightning bolt leg, which can kind of shoot lightning bolts and things like that. So he decides that now that he has this kind of weird messed up body, that he can no longer be Ace Arn. And he's going to take the first letter of each of these alien species names, plus the first letter of his name, so U, L, T, R, and then A, and call himself Ultra. So, uh, you know, pretty much right away, he defeats these aliens, and um, that's it for the, the, the appearances of the aliens that create him. Uh, he goes back uh, eventually to Earth, to Dalesville, USA, which is where Ace Arn was from, and he sees his... Uh, fiance Bonnie Blake um, he basically had a pretty silver age or maybe even golden age kind of deal where you know now that I'm a monster I can no longer you know be with the woman I love she deserves better than me so a whole lot of the series is basically him moaning around about how he isn't human anymore how his former fiance deserves better than him and she it, it would just be better for her if he was dead and so it's kind of sad um, Eventually, towards the end of the series, he creates this ray that can transform him back into his human self. And instead of telling Bonnie this, he just says, Oh yeah, Ultra rescued me. I was on an asteroid and he came to save me. He's been giving me treatment this whole time. Uh, you know, Ultra is out there. You know, he's a good guy. And, you know, instead of just revealing who he is, he, he comes up with this lie. So that was kind of interesting. Other than that, he really doesn't do a whole lot interesting. It's pretty typical Silver Age stuff. He fights a lot of aliens on different planets in uh, our solar system, different Martians and Jovians and things like that. His original run only ran until Mystery in Space 110, so that's like eight issues or whatever. It was really short, and uh, he actually didn't appear for a long, long time after that. I don't know um, why people didn't use him. I guess his appearance was too kind of crazy, but eventually he shows up again. Uh, in the 80s, so he makes a couple cameo appearances. He gets a who's who page, which practically every character existing at that point got a who's who page. You know, he finally kind of shows up in a cameo in Animal Man in 1990. Grant Morrison uses him as one of the characters that is living in Limbo. Uh, Limbo is a place where characters that have kind of fallen out of continuity find themselves, so I guess that fits Ultra here. Um, he doesn't appear again until Starman number 55 by James Robinson. Uh, he and Space Cabby and the Space Ranger are all sharing a taxi ride, and they're telling, basically telling stories. Each version, each, each character has heard a version of the story that's slightly different from each other, and they basically fill each other in on, on the differences in their stories. 
After that, he doesn't really appear again until the Infinite Crisis, which places him in our current day era, which is kind of odd because he was always a future character, but for maybe the Infinite Crisis brought him back in time. So after that, he is clearly shown to exist in the present, and he actually shows up with a little bit more uh, frequency. He doesn't really do a lot. He's mostly a, a background character, but I think just because of his uh, interesting look and um, power set, that people thought, you know, anytime there's an alien, we have a chance to use this kind of interesting looking guy. Uh, he actually shows up in a Jeff Lemire story, which is kind of heartbreaking. He's uh, sitting in this spaceship watching a recording of his uh, fiance play over and over. And you hear his internal monologue and the different alien species within him are talking amongst themselves about how Ace Arn is fading away. And they're going to keep him in with them in the present as long as possible by watching, you know, his former life on the TV screen. And as long as they can help it, they're going to keep Ace around, but they know at some point he'll just fade away. That was really the last story of him in the, the old continuity. With the New 52, he shows up again in the uh, Jeff Lynn Meyer story. He uh, is a, a baby, and um, he's created by Sardath, which if you don't know him, he's from the Adam Strange stories. Uh, they take an alien baby and they kind of get all the, the DNA from different species in the, their solar system. And it's supposed to be kind of a peace treaty deal. Like, if you give us some DNA, we'll put it in a baby and we'll all have this baby with part of our species in it. Of course, that didn't work too well. Uh, Biff shows up and he basically turns him into Infinitus, or he tries to turn him into Infinitus, which he thinks will kind of destroy the universe and reset it with Biff in control. Uh, of course, that doesn't work. The Justice League United and Martian Manhunter uh, show up and uh, try to help uh, Ultra out. Uh, Martian Manhunter creates a bond with him because he's only a child at this point. He's basically an innocent, naive character that has been thrust into this world-destroying role. The Legion comes back from the future, and they think uh, if Ultra is allowed to live, he will destroy the future. So it creates a short fight before they eventually kind of team up and save him. At the end of that storyline, uh, he goes back to the future with the uh, Legion of Superheroes. And so far, as of now, he hasn't shown back up in the New 52, but I think that they will eventually use him. All right, thanks for watching this episode. Uh, let me know what you think, and uh, follow the page. Thanks. Bye.